everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you a design that wouldn't necessarily only have to be for Halloween, kind of like my cat necklace video, but this one is going to be a Bewitch design from the old TV series Bewitch. So we have Samantha on her broom that flies around the nail, as well as the Bewitch logo on the other side. It would, if you're just a Bewitch fan, obviously any time of year, but with the whole witch theme and flying and all of that, I figured it would be appropriate right now. I hope you guys like it and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. To start out this, I'm going to be making the skyline that is behind Samantha. I'm going to do a lighter shade of blue at the tip, not super light, but kind of a periwinkle medium blue, and then a darker, very glittery blue in the back or above it, and blend that down for an ombre. If you need to go back through with your lighter shade over the top of it, you certainly can. Then I'm going to take a pale yellow and sculpt my moon, kind of up in one of the corners, just a little bit off center. When you're doing all of these different shapes in the beginning here, make sure they're very, very thin. You don't want anything to end up being too thick, especially the ombre, because there's going to be stuff on top of it. So try your best to keep everything a very, very thin layer. I placed three little silver stars next to the moon, and now I'm going to encapsulate this nail with a layer of clear acrylic. If the beginning layers were too thick, by the time you encapsulated it and then you filed it, it would just be a really bulky nail. So everything you wanna try to be aware that you're keeping it thin, especially since there are so many layers on this one just to start with, that it can end up getting very thick very quick. I'm going to file this nail into shape with my e-file, and then after that's done, I'm going to take a darker shade yet of blue, so this is darker than the top color than the upper sky area, and I'm going to be sculpting the buildings that are in, in the skyline in the background behind her. If you are a Bewitched fan, I have a video that is super old, that is a bewitched hand painted design from who I don't know. It's probably, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Um, I did a whole classic TV show series at one point on my channel before I started doing a lot more acrylic and gel and it was all regular paint. It was, um, regular lacquer for nails and then acrylic paint on everything. Such a fun video, such a fun design. You can see me in my, you know, newness of being a nail artist. So if you're curious, I'll put a link to that one in the description box below. It is a design that I actually, was, I was so proud of it when I first did it. All of the designs part of that series, I was just so happy with how they turned out. So if you like classic TV shows, MASH, um, Brady Bunch, I can't remember all the ones that I did. I Love Lucy, then I can <laughs> direct you towards those. So we've got the different little skyline. You can't do a whole lot of skyline, especially if your nail is an almond shaped as mine is, but you can add a couple buildings in. On a nail for backing, now we get to start sculpting Samantha. I'm going to begin with her broomstick and this is with a just a brown acrylic. I'm going to make a long skinny brown line and then I'm just going to, it's so thin and delicate this line, make sure that it cures fairly well before you start to sculpt anything else on top of it. So if your acrylic is one that takes a little bit longer to cure, you may want to sculpt your broomstick and you could do the end of the broom, the bristles on the broom, and then leave it for a moment just so that when you start working on top of it and adding more details to Samantha, like her legs, you don't mess up the broom. You don't get the your broomstick to be a little crooked or broken. So depending on, depending on your acrylic, you may need to do that. To start with her legs, I'm going to begin with a leg that is behind, and that is going to be with a tan color acrylic. I'm going to just sculpt that leg going down. As you are angling this, definitely look at your photos back and forth. I found that the image of her legs did not play very well to 3D. It looked very nicely flat and in the, the illustration style, the drawing style, that the original Bewitched opening credits played. However, it seemed a little awkward to sculpt it. It does work, but it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, this is not quite, not quite as easy as I was hoping it was going to be as far as how it laid. But then I'm going to add her thigh, what part of her thigh that shows above that, and then the very start of her dress that's black. The other thing that's very interesting from the Bewitched opening, um, opening scene is that sometimes her dress is blue and sometimes it's black. And if it's blue, it, to me it just seemed like it didn't, she wasn't as vivid off of the background as well as I would hope it would be. And so I decided to do her dress black, but I did highlight it with a dark blue. So we do have some of that both black and blue. But depending on what your preference is, you could certainly switch that to be blue on for her dress instead of the black. Still with the black acrylic or blue or whatever you're using, I'm going to add another coat of that acrylic over what would be like the rest of her thigh that's underneath the dress and then kind of down towards her butt. Just to give that a little bit more shape, I do want this to be a nicely 3D built up design. So same thing, I'm going to be adding 
another coat of the acrylic over her chest area to give that a little bit a little bit more shape so it cuts in at her waist so it flares at her chest flares at her hip going back to the tan acrylic that I used for her leg I'm going to be adding her other leg this one is overlapping the first leg that was sculpted and coming down and as you are adding that second leg make sure that it just looks like it's smooth this leg is going over a lot of different bumps it's going up and over the previous leg it's going up and over the broomstick so make sure as you're sculpting it that you coax it into being a smooth surface on top it'll be you know going up and over all that stuff underneath but as long as it looks smooth on top that's really what makes a difference what really what matters now I'm going to go back to the top of her body and I'm going to sculpt her chest and then up her neck and then I'm going to add more black acrylic to finish off the dress. The chest area needed to be added before you could do the neckline of her dress. So that is kind of a, you got to do this before you do that sort of a situation. Finish that off, add her shoulder. And then if you want to, you can go through and you can do her arm. You can go through and do her other legs. I decided as I was looking at this, looking at this that her legs looked a little too short. So I'm adding a little more acrylic to extend the first leg and the second leg. And then I'll go back through and add the feet in a minute, but I'm just going to get those legs lengthened for a second. And then I'm going to do her arm. So when you're adding the arm, it's going to go. So it's, she's just gently kind of touching the broomstick. She's not holding on. She's well balanced. She doesn't need to hold on tight. She just has to have her, her hands setting there very stylish. Like, so we've got the arm going down. I'm not going to extend that arm all the way up to her shoulder with the tan because she does have like a three quarter length sleeve on. So we're going to take the black acrylic from the shoulder, pulling it down so that it will cover up that arm a little bit. When you are working with black and black acrylic on top of the tan color, you have to be somewhat slow and careful with it to make sure that you don't get it to go too far over the top of the tan because it will stain most likely, depending on your brand, maybe it won't, most of them do so when you're working on top of it especially like her chest her neckline and then on her arm just slowly bring that acrylic down until it's exactly where you want it so that you don't get a black smudgy look with the tan i'm going to be adding her head because this is a caricature of samantha her head is a little bit bigger not quite bobblehead proportions but it's definitely bigger than what it would be proportionally to her body so as i'm sculpting this i am keeping that in mind just kind of giving her you know that caricature look it's really visible in the opening thing with Darren versus Samantha but she still has still has that styling add the ear and the hairline then going back to your black acrylic you're going to be adding the cape throughout this whole design I am going back and forth between light colors which would be like the yellow that her of her hair which you'll see in a minute and then you know her skin and then black and going back and forth between those two colors can be somewhat difficult because the black acrylic stays in your brush, it leaves some pigment in your brush. It just kind of sticks in there. So when you're going back and forth between these colors, it can be really easy to be like, okay, I need a little bit more tan, grab a bead of tan, pick it up. And then it looks kind of gray because the color from the black is still there and it's going to mix in with your tan acrylic. So if you've got this or any design where you're going back and forth between two colors that do not just easily go between it's not like you know you're using pink and red or pink and purple and it doesn't really matter if there's just a little bit of pigment left over from one color or the other with this case it really does it makes a huge difference and so after you use your dark color you're going to want to wipe it off on your paper towel in a clean spot on your paper towel multiple times so just wipe it without dipping it again and then dip it into your monomer and then wipe it again and if it looks clean at that point you can definitely just be good to go and some of this will be trial and error you'll see at what point the products that you're using you need to wipe again and then you can just kind of figure it out as you go but if you are doing this and after that first wiping it still comes out looking a little bit gray you can see in the monomer that you're wiping off from your brush that there's staining still dip it again wipe it again the reason that you need to wipe it first before you dip it into the monomer the first time to clean it out is because if you have any black or a lot of black in your brush and then you dip it into your monomer, you're going to start to tint your monomer. And then no matter what you do, you're going to end up with a black tone to every single color that you use from that point until you dump your monomer. So make sure you try to get all of it out before you dip it. And this is the same thing. Even if you're going back into black, really wipe out your brush, then dip it and then grab your next bead of black so that you don't get all of that pigment in your monomer. 
I have her yellow hair. I have her black hat. Same thing with the black. Make sure that you're carefully going over her yellow hair so that you don't get it smudged. Wrap a piece of wire around the top of a nail polish bottle. So just a cap of a bottle. That'll give it a nice circle. And then you're going to just make sure it fits around the nail comfortably so that once it goes to spin, it's not going to get stuck. It's got plenty of space to move. Then you're going to bend the one tail of the wire straight up, then straight back, and then straight up again. So you're, you've almost formed a square underneath, underneath your loop. So you're going to just make sure that that fits. You want the tip of the, the last bend to be in the middle of the circle approximately. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but somewhere nearish the middle. I'm going to string two little silver beads onto the wire. You can use one bar bead if you want to, but I my bar beads were slightly too long. So I'm just going to use those two little beads, then place a bead of acrylic underneath the nail and then hold those beads in place. After they seem like they're going to stay right where you put them, you can slide your little loop out if you want. I put in a space holder just to make sure the beads didn't go anywhere. Another small piece of wire and more acrylic up and over the top of the beads so they really don't go anywhere. And then you're going to string your loop back through the beads and add a little bit of acrylic on the end of the wire so that it can no longer come out. Test it out, make sure that as you're spinning it, it spins just how you envisioned it would, around in circles. Grab your Samantha and then you're going to attach her to the wire on one side with some clear acrylic on the back so that it lines up fairly well with her broomstick. Then with more clear acrylic, fill in everything behind her with more of the clear acrylic. You want to make sure that there is plenty of acrylic behind there, that it isn't going to be delicate, especially the end of that broomstick. As I said in the beginning of the video, it is so thin, it's so delicate, you just need to be really careful with it. At this point, this is when you are securing it, you're making sure it's not going to break. So add a fairly thick layer of clear behind everything, but pay extra close attention to the broomstick. When I'm adding this clear acrylic behind, use wet acrylic so it's not, you don't have to press it too much. You can just guide it into the position that you want it to be in. If it's too thick and you have to really press on it to get it to pat out, that's going to actually become a risk of it breaking. So make sure your acrylic is thin and it'll just flow where you tell it to go. On a silicone mat with white gel paint, I am going to be painting the Bewitched logo. So if we're going to start out with the B. Usually when I paint something for nail art, I begin in the middle of the word and work my way out because I'm centering it. With this particular design, you don't have to do that at all because you're just painting the word and you can center it onto the nail later. So it's a little bit easier and it's, it was actually kind of weird to be painting it from the beginning of the word just going down because I've painted them from the middle out so many times. So we've got B-E-W-I-T. Look at your logo definitely save a photo of the Bewitched logo from the internet. Same thing like with the picture of Samantha. There are, it's easy to find that opening logo and she's got a couple different, you know, positions that she's in a little different smile. Her head may be tipped a different way. So if you want to switch it up and give her a different, a different look, you certainly could. After you have the Bewitched logo fully painted, your I's dotted, your T's are crossed, then you're going to head you're going to go ahead and cure this on your silicone mat so just i like to place my mat directly on top after that's been cured you're going to apply a layer of gel top coat over the bewitched logo if you do not feel comfortable doing that with the bottle brush you can certainly use a little paintbrush to apply the top coat after you have a nice coat of top coat cure that again and then it'll peel right off of your silicone mat Pick it up, place it over the opposite side of the wire loop from Samantha, and then with jewelry gel, you're going to glue it down. So just place the jewelry gel down and then hold it, and then stick that into your lamp. After it has been cured and it's holding its shape, then you're going to apply some gel sealer or gel top coat over the back of it on top of the jewelry gel so that it, there's no stickiness, so that you're just covering all of that up. Otherwise, my jewelry gel stays tacky. After you have it completely covered, go ahead and cure that again. And now we can detail Samantha with acrylic paint. With a bright blue shade of acrylic paint, I'm going to be adding some highlights to her dress. This shade of blue, I know when I've used it so many different times before, it dries fairly clear. So this is going to give me a blue hue. It isn't going to be bright blue like it looks right now. It will definitely tone itself down and give you this slightly blue tint. With black paint, you can do all of the details, all the outlines. I'm going to paint down her shoes. When you're doing the outlines on her, do them carefully. Don't overdo it. You don't want them to be really thick and really clumsy looking. You want them to be nice and delicate. Everything about her, she's a very delicate personality as far as just, you know, so prim and proper as far as the, you know, the era it makes a big difference. Add a little bit of detailing on the broomstick, outlines around her face because again, of the era that this is from, all of the outlines are 
vivid black lines. Not like today's cartoons where they're usually, um, you know, either a different shade of whatever they're outlining. So if it's yellow, it's with a slightly darker like yellow brown that they're outlined with. Because of, you know, the style that this is, all of the outlines are with black. And her eyes even aren't aren't eyes like I would typically draw them. They're a little a little swirly, which is a really cool detail. I love I love those creative elements that you find when you go to start painting things that you might not have even noticed otherwise. As you go through and you're doing all of these details on any part of Samantha, if your black lines get where they're not in the right spot or they're just kind of, you know, maybe they're a little bit off or they're a little too thick or something, don't try to remove them with any kind of a solvent. Don't try to use acetone to take off the black lines or isopropyl alcohol. What you are going to probably, your best bet is going to be to take a buffer block and just to buff it off or a, a fine file and file just the area that you need the paint removed. It will file off very quickly and easily and it won't sink in. Sometimes if you use a solvent to remove acrylic paint off of acrylic, the acrylic is a little porous underneath and it'll soak up some of that pigment. And so same thing to try to, try to keep her, her tan color the color it is. We don't want to mix any black into it. So try not to try not to get any black in there once all of her details are done her lips are red her hat has the red her, her cape has the red white teeth then with white paint you can add a couple little lit windows in the buildings that are in the skyscape and a couple black windows for the dark ones apply some gel sealer over the background really make sure that those silver stars sparkle once that is done you can just take, I'm actually going to put matte top coat over the word bewitched. In person, I thought it would be a little easier to read if it was matte, and I think it was. Matte top coat over Samantha, and then that's it. You can have her fly around your nail. If you wanted to do a witch design that was a flying witch that wasn't bewitched, it was just a generic witch, I do have a video that is that exact concept from a couple years ago. Uh, things will be done a little differently in there just because it is an older video. So if you want to see kind of a different methodology, you can certainly go and watch that one. And I will see you all next time. Bye.